Hey guys, what's up? Welcome to another video. Today I'm going to be showing you guys how to remove and uh, disassemble your Traxxas TRX 2.5 2.5R or 3.3 engine. So let's get started by removing these uh, engine mount screws. You are also probably going to want to remove any fuel out of your tank so that it doesn't leak everywhere, but I'm going to I'm going to risk it. All right, so now that that's done, so if you like me and you've got the high intake filter, you're going to take out this pin and then pop that off the engine. Now this would be a good time to clean your air filter if it needs cleaning. Mine's pretty much new, so. Next thing you're gonna wanna do, if you have an easy start, is take off these screws here, and uh, that's just going to let this little wiring harness for the easy start drop out of the truck. Like that. And what I always do is I screw the screws back into there lightly so that I don't forget where they go. All right, so next thing, I'm gonna remove my exhaust. So now I can pop off the carburetor so now take off the fuel lines. If you've got fuel in the tank, it's gonna dump everywhere. So what you can do is take off the engine and then wrap the fuel line, which is this bottom one down here, up into that hole where the easy start harness goes. And then you can also do the exhaust and then you know, you'll never have a spill unless it tips over. Now would also be a good time to clean any gunk or fuel off of your truck in your gas tank. Okay, so now we have the engine out of the truck and it's on a clean surface. Um, so now I'm gonna take that off it up a little bit so now we can get started by popping this wire off for the glow plug and if you don't have a easy start then you don't need to do this and then you're going to unscrew your easy start or pull start or drill start whatever you've got from the back of the engine There we go. And then there will also be a screw holding on your ground wire if you have an easy start. And bam, there you go. Easy start is removed. All right, so now I will remove the other screws for the engine mount. All right, so now the engine mount is removed. What I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna, again, lightly thread in all these screws so that I don't lose them and or forget where they go. And then I'm also gonna screw in the bottom screws as well. 
And now I'm going to take off the header for the exhaust. off um by the way all of these screws for the engine mount and for this header um are 2.5 millimeter screws uh, so looking at it closely the exhaust seal is actually in very good condition which is great so now going to take off the head if you have the plastic protector take that off though because it makes it hard to get here once you unscrew those five screws the head will just pop off. I guess probably should have taken the glow plug out. Before I did that, I can still remove it. And there is a little um, shim in there. Really, if it's all clogged up, you can either replace or clean off your glow plug. And I'm gonna clean off this head probably a little bit later. Next thing is remove these. So now this just slides off. Uh, O-ring looks good once again. Could use some cleaning though, so I'll do that. So my crank is also a bit rusty, which is not good. Engine turns over easy. There ain't that much marking on the piston. Uh, in fact, the crank case is extraordinarily clean right now. So all good sign. All right, so now to remove the carburetor, you're gonna need a 5.5 millimeter wrench. Then your carb will pop out. Mine's a bit stuck. Just try not to do that. It is a plastic housing, so I just ruined it. Great. Oh, man. Um, I'm going to try sticking it in the vise and see if it'll come out. Okay, there we go, that worked. So it's actually a bit marred up here, which is not good. Um, but otherwise, seems clean. And since my engine was running, I'm going to assume that it doesn't need anything to be cleaned. So next thing's next, clutch bell. Um, There's a little C or E clip. Uh, just gotta pry that off. Very easy. There's a little washer on top. Alright, so that bearing just goes in there. And now I'll remove the clutch. Just like that and there's this little eight millimeter nut that you have to remove put it in a vise not too hard though just enough set aside and then the flywheel will pop off um, let's use a screwdriver and gently pressure you don't want to scratch up the engine or your flywheel and now there's this little pin right here 
that keeps the flywheel on. And you're gonna try and pry that off. And if it's stuck on there, then just take your screwdriver and make it bigger by spreading it apart. And there you go. All right, so now it's uh, pretty much um, all apart, almost. So next thing you're gonna do is you're gonna take off this piston sleeve. Um, there are professional ways to do it. Like if you get the piston down to bottom dead center, you can kind of see a little notch in there but that's annoying and I don't want to do that. So what I'm going to do instead is a very non-professional way. So what you're going to do to get the sleeve out, unless you want to do, you know, the official way. Kind of pop it out like this which is annoying, is put your piston down to bottom dead center and slide a zip tie through the exhaust port. And then slowly just turn your crankshaft, but you don't want to be too forceful because you do not want to damage the sleeve. Uh, if you damage the sleeve, well then you're gonna need a new sleeve. And not that it's too expensive, I'm sure it's only 20 bucks, but that's still 20 bucks and a couple of days you gotta wait for it to get here and it's just annoying. So be careful while you're doing that. Mine appears to be stuck. So this is gonna be extra fun for me. All right, so I ended up having to put the flywheel back on and using the vise to clamp onto the flywheel and help me push it up. But it is, it did work, so, I don't, and I don't think I damaged the, I don't think I damaged the sleeve. So you're just gonna lift it up enough so that you can get a screwdriver under there. Oh yeah, that's, that's stuck, you can't see it on camera because it doesn't appear to be that stuck, but I'm applying a good amount of pressure, so. So now, as long as I'm very careful, I can use some pliers to get it out. Also, when you're taking this out, the newer engines will have um, a little pin in there to mark where the sleeve should go, but the older engines will not. So you're gonna wanna make some kind of a mark, a very light mark. You can either use um, um, like a Sharpie or you could, you know, just make a little divot with a uh, with a exacto knife. So now the way to get the piston out is you're gonna put it to top dead center and you can just pop it off and there we go. And there you go, there's your piston. Um, and then to take the piston itself off. You're going to need a very small set of needle nose pliers. And there's, I don't know if you can see that, but there's a little clip. There's a little wire in there. You just gotta get that wire out. It's just like a real engine like my RM250 engine that's on the floor right now. And then you push 
out the pin. And bam, there we go, one top end. And then to take the crank out, should be able to just uh, pop it out, depending on how rusty it is. It should, yep, there we go. Pop out, just like that. And then to get the bearings out, there are a couple of ways to do it. There's a specific tool made to get these out if you wanna buy that tool, or you can heat up the engine case to 220 degrees Fahrenheit, and um, that'll cause metal expansion, and then the bearings should come out. These ones look clean, and they spin very nicely. Um, and there's a little plastic case on this bearing, so if you're careful, you can get like a little tiny hook and peel that off if you want to inspect that. But I'm confident that my bearings are very clean and they work well, so I'm not going to complain. So yeah, that's how you disassemble a Traxxas TRX. 2.5 uh, or 3 or 2.5 R or 3.3 engine uh, Some of the parts might look different, but they're pretty much all it's the same way of You know taking apart. So yeah uh, Thanks for watching and uh, I'll see you guys in the next one where I'm probably going to be porting and polishing some of the parts on here give it a little bit more f easier fuel flow and uh, more performance.